Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today I'd like to talk about an operating system that I've been using as my daily driver now for the past three weeks. I think it's amazing. I have experienced zero real software compromises as a result of using this operating system, so I wanted to share it with all of you, and I also wanted to share some common misconceptions about it that people have had, that I've read on the internet, and that I've experienced myself through my own ignorance in the hopes of clearing things up a little bit. This is called Graphene OS. Graphene OS is not a ROM. It's not read-only memory. It Graphene OS is an honest to God, fully functional, fully featured operating system based on the Android open source project. It is so easy to install that even an idiot like me was able to install it on a device using the web installer fairly quickly. This is not installing Gentoo from a stage one tarball back in 2002. It really is genuinely simple. And the idea behind this operating system is to take the Android open source project and harden it and make it way more secure, but also way more private and to give control back to the user of their device, which I find really cool. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the past 20 years, a big part of Google's business model is collecting as much data on you as humanly possible. And we are going to include in the video description a few links to a few studies that just demonstrate exactly how much data is constantly being sent back to Google servers when you are using a normal phone with stock Android. One of the things that they do by default is have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning turned on. Even if they don't have that turned on, and even if you don't have location turned on, it'll try to figure out from cell phone tower data where you are. And one of the really creepy things here is it says that Google can ascertain with a high degree of confidence whether a user is still walking, running, bicycling, or riding on a train or a car. It achieves this by tracking an Android mobile user's location coordinates at frequent time intervals, from several sensors, it says here, it gets them from the onboard sensor, such as the accelerometer, and then it uploads all of this shit to Google along with a timestamp. This article goes on for quite a while to go over all the data that they are reporting, and it just, it's very creepy. It feels like you're getting roofied. It's really, really creepy and really, really weird. Now, of all the things that Graphene OS does, and there are many things that we'll talk about, one of the things that I appreciate the most is the ability to run Google Play services and framework on the device as a normal user not a privileged user, and to be able to revoke permissions from it as I please. This is an excellent compromise because most applications now on modern day Android require this stuff to actually work. The applications that we use, if you want to be able to use Uber, if you want to be able to use banking applications, you need to be able to have this Google crap installed on your phone because some of these apps just won't work without the Google stuff installed on your phone. They're dependent on it. If you want to have notifications for a lot of applications, they'll use Google's push notification service, which means I have to have Google Play services and everything else installed on my phone or else my notifications will won't show up. So I won't know if I got a message unless I'm always clicking and opening the app, which obviously is not going to work. If I wanted to deal with that stuff, I'd be using the mail. So what's really cool about this is the ability to put Google Play services in a sandbox where it doesn't have those permissions. There are many other interesting security features of this operating system, such as a hardened memory allocator, so that if you're running certain apps that have certain code in C that may be insecure with regards to memory allocation, it's more secure when running on Graphene OS. You have features like Wi-Fi MAC address randomization. So each time I connect to a Wi-Fi network, it will report a different MAC address to that Wi-Fi router each time I connect to it so it doesn't know that I was the same person that was connecting five minutes ago. It has a feature called storage scopes where I can tell an application that the only files you're allowed to see are these. So the application will think that it has permissions to view my entire SD card, but the only thing that it's allowed to look at are the folders or files that I explicitly give it permission to, which is some iOS has had for a while, but Android doesn't have, but they do. There's a lot of these little security features like this that wind up getting featured upstream in the Android open source project and featured on every Android phone in existence, but they often start on Graphene OS. So I wanted to go over a couple of the common misconceptions that people have regarding this amazing operating system that I think everybody should be using just with this little demonstration here. So one of the first misconceptions that a lot of people have is that if I use Graphene OS, if I use any one of these weird ass operating systems focused on security and privacy, I won't be able to use my banking apps anymore. Uber's not going to work or anything like that. So I am going to try logging on to City right now. Let's just take a look and see if this loads. All right, and as you can see, I am able to log on to my banking app. If I want to use Uber, I can just scroll down over here and click on Uber. I'm just gonna cut that out because there's no reason for you to see that. Okay, let's do that again. So if I want, I can use my Uber app. I can enter a pickup address. So let's say, I don't know, let's, let's, let's choose my, let's enter a pickup point. So I will choose my old store location right now. 
and I will choose my slightly older store location right now. And as you can see, if I want, I can confirm a pickup and I can get a cab ride across town using Uber on this device. I can use Citibank. I can do everything that I would do with a normal Android device using Graphene OS. I can just do it more securely. And it's, again, it's up to me whether I install Google Play services and framework on my phone or not. Now, a common misconception people have is that I can't use Uber or I can't use my banking app or anything else because of this weirdo operating system. And that's not true. All you have to do is go to apps and install Google Play services and Google services framework if you want to be able to have those things on your device. They make it very easy to do so at their own internal app store. The difference, again, when using Graphene OS is that you actually have the ability to set the permissions of it because again, it's not being run as a privileged user anymore. They put Google Play services in a sandbox so it's a normal ass app with pleb permissions like everything else and you set the permissions. So you can turn off network if you want to. You can turn off things like sensors and location and everything else so it no longer has the ability to use the sensors like the accelerometer to figure out where I, you know, where I am or whether I'm on a bike or whether I'm walking or any of this crap that I never gave it permission or consented to anyway. You turn off Google's ability to roofie you and take all of your damn data, which is really cool. Now, another misconception that people will have is that I can't get notifications on Graphene OS. And I understand why they believe that to be true, because when you install Google Play services, even after you do that, a lot of the apps that rely on Google's notification servers for push up notifications are not going to work properly. However, there's a very, very quick thing that you can do to get around that. So when you go to the permissions for Google Play services, you go to battery over here, and you set it to unrestricted, and it's just fine. Again, by default, this is just a normal ass app, which means it's going to come with optimized battery preferences. You change it there to unrestricted, and now all of your push notifications are going to work. Now, you may wonder, why is it not like that by default? Why should something be unrestricted by default? If you own your phone and you control your phone, then that means everything that you put on your phone, you should be able to set permissions on. Is that the most user intuitive thing in the world? No, and you, I did have to dig a little bit through the F, there's an FAQ on and it's like in paragraph four or five, so it's harder for an illiterate moron like me to find it, but I did eventually find it. And when I did, all of my push notifications on this device work just fine. So after installing Google Play services as a non-privileged user and setting it to unrestricted battery access, so it could have this, those battery permissions that it would have if it was running on stock Android to begin with, I now have an Android experience where for me, I have zero compromises at a software level. All of my applications work the same way they did before. They just work with a higher level of security and I'm able to do everything I could before and Google has less ability to spy on me. Graphene OS is free. This is open source and anybody who wants to install it can install it. Now, some of the misconceptions that come with security are, listen, you're talking about I'm using a device that is de-Googled in some way, but I'm, it only works on Pixel hardware. Oh, really? Oh, tell me more. But it's act the reason they do that is because the Pixel is the only device that has the specific security features and functionality that they want in order to offer the level of security that they're looking for. If you want, you are more than welcome because it's an open source project to take the code and try and hack away at it to make it work on your phone. But they're primarily focusing on the Pixel. The Pixel has Wi-Fi MAC address randomization support in the firmware. It has verified boot in there so that you it's harder to just you know randomly install a different OS on it and trick you into thinking a different your old OS is installed on it to be able to hack you. It has robust rate limiting to avoid brute forcing via the secure element with a Titan chip. So a four digit password can actually be made secure. You're not going to be able to do what you were able to do to the San Bernardino iPhone on this phone running Graphene OS. It's more secure in that way. They considered Google's own employees as a threat vector when they were testing this phone. So their idea was if one of our own employees goes rogue and does something they can't, they shouldn't be doing, are they able to get access to people's data? So that was considered in here. Now, again, I do consider it to be a serious hardware compromise. I do like having a headphone jack and I do like having a micro SD card slot. So this is a serious compromise for me. However, I am willing to take the compromise of not having my micro SD card slot and not having a headphone jack to be able to use a device that offers me this level of security. And also admittedly, I got this phone for 
free, so I can't really complain. But that's a that, that, that's a long story in and of itself. My boss got this phone, and he actually hated it so much because of the the feel of it in his hand compared to the Pixel 4a 5G, which he really likes, that he literally just said, I hate this thing, you can have it. This phone supports hardware back key stores, verified boot, attestation, hardware-based exploit mitigation. Uh, it, it's really, really a secure device, even if you dislike Google. Uh, I, I personally don't like the idea of using a Google device, but I do like using this. Samsung has devices where they are shipping it stock with stuff that is giving away your information. So over here, you have to opt out to get this do not sell option, not opt in. They are partnering with Meta to the point where Meta Services is running on all these phones by default, which again, Facebook is not exactly known for being nice with people's data. In the past, OnePlus has been caught uploading clipboard data if certain words were detected in it. And this other Android privacy report I'll link down below, Xiaomi was logging and sending back all different types of shit. So a lot of these phone manufacturers are really, really bad when it comes to privacy. And while there are a lot of complaints to be had with Google over their actual software, the hardware itself is actually pretty secure once you root out all of their software-based bullshit, which Graphene OS does an amazing job at. So I think the biggest misconception when it comes to using Graphene OS is that I have to give up my life as a normal user to use this. I'm going to be making serious compromises and giving things up. And what I've experienced, at least at the software level over these past three weeks, is that I have had to give up nothing. If you install Google Play services and Google Play framework on a Graphene OS phone and then set battery to unrestricted, this is pretty much like using a normal stock Android phone, except Google Play services and framework is not going to have privileged access to your sensors, is not going to have access to your location data, does not get access to what you're doing in other apps so that it can track you and send all this stuff back to Google that it otherwise would have, which is really, really amazing. And again, you're losing nothing by doing it. And above all, by using this, you're kind of sending a message that I want you out of my life. I don't want you watching every single thing that I do, which is pretty cool. I really do hope that hardware manufacturers come out there at some point that have all the security features that you get with the Pixel phones so that I don't have to use a phone that has this logo on the back of it because I don't, I don't really like that very much, even if I did get this phone for free. But I think it's a really cool project. I think it is worth checking out. My boss did give this uh, this set of developers a donation because he respects the work that they do. And I am really happy using this over the past three weeks. So again, all the misconceptions I've seen about this are based on the fact that I'm going to be giving something up by using it. And honestly, all you're giving up by using this is the time it takes to install it. And you're, all you're giving up is the fact that I have to take one minute out of my life to install Google Play Services Framework and one minute out to set the battery permission. Being able to turn off all the permissions on all the Google crap on your phone, it gives you back a lot of control over your device. It makes you feel like you have control over it again, which is really cool. You also don't have to be a privacy nut to care about this stuff. And, you know, people will say, well, why do you care about this if you have nothing to hide? What fucking business is it of Google what all of this shit is? Like, how is it your business whether I'm walking or on a bike at one in the morning? Like, why? Just why? If somebody was looking through your window, if somebody was looking through your window with binoculars and then writing down, okay, at 3.43 a.m., he was, I don't know, like reading a book. At 3.48 a.m., he turned on the TV. At 3.53, he yelled at his wife or something. Like, you would close the blinds because it's just none of their effing business. You don't have to be a nutcase to care about privacy. And all of us, if we saw somebody with binoculars looking through our window, would probably say, or close the blinds. And I see this as doing the same thing. This is just politely looking at Google, doing this, and then closing the blinds, which should have happened 15 years ago. The best time to do it was 15 years ago. The next best time to do it is today. And I think this is a really cool way to do it. I think it's a really cool project. And I am happy, honored, and humbled to be working at a company that donated money to this project that is continuing to donate money to projects like this that give users back freedom over the shit that they buy, that they own. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, I will leave a link down below to their Matrix chat where they answer lots of questions, including a lot of my stupid questions on how to configure this device when I screwed it up and didn't realize that the reason I wasn't getting notifications was because of the battery thing. The other thing that I find really cool, there was one bug in this that, that I found at 2 a.m. Not kidding, 2 a.m. At like 2.15, I see a chat. Oh, I know what it is. 
And at 3 o'clock, okay, uploading a new one. And then at 4 a.m., my phone had a notification on it saying a new operating system is available. So but one of the things my boss has said is that the, pro, the people that win are the people that are that dedicated. Like the people that are working 16 or 20 hours a day, the people that are just sitting at their computer tied to whatever they're programming at 4 a.m. because they're that excited about it are always the people that wind up winning out over the people that just see it as a 9 to 5. And that's how I see the people that run this project. They seem like people that don't do this as a 9 to 5. Like this is their livelihood. This is their passion. This is the shit that they care about for good reason. And it really does show in the quality of the work and the project that they do. If you want to give yourself a little bit more sovereignty over your phone, your identity, your privacy, your security, and your life, I would suggest checking out this project. It really kicks ass. And again, for me to give up the headphone jack in the micro SD card slot, you got to be offering something pretty effing good for me to give up things that I would never give up under any normal circumstance. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.